Half-Life Portal Left 4 Dead Counter-Strike. Valve is responsible for some of the most iconic games in gaming history, and practically every game they've ever made has been a massive success. If Ubisoft was Valve, they have already released Half-Life 19, some convoluted mess of a game milking the IP for all it's worth. So where's Half-Life 3? Why doesn't Valve take advantage of their sterling reputation to keep selling chart toppers like so many others? It doesn't make sense. But when you look at Valve's history, it all becomes clear. And there's still hope we might get the game we've been waiting a decade for. And it all started when Valve was formed by two former Microsoft employees, Gabe Newell and Mike Harrington. These two guys saw how successful Doom and Quake were and figured they could get into the industry, choosing to make an FPS game on the Quake engine. With a small team, Valve spent two years developing their first game, Half-Life an innovative first-person shooter that told an amazing story while you played. It blew people away. You need to understand the impact this title had on the industry. GameSpot said it was the closest thing to a revolutionary step the genre had ever taken, completely redefining the first-person shooters and preparing the way for games like Halo, Call of Duty, and Battlefield. In 2013, IGN said you could divide the FPS genre into pre and post Half-Life, showing just how far Half-Life pushed technical envelope. Along with being universally praised by everyone, the game was a massive monetary success. With just one title, Valve immediately became a top dog studio swimming in cash. Pretty rare for a first time developer. And they didn't stop there. Team Fortress Classic, Counter-Strike, Half-Life 2, Portal, Left 4 Dead, Dota 2, all of these titles came from them. All games that redefined or created entire genres. And the money just kept pouring in. Every one of these games elevated Valve higher, reaching a godlike status and causing people to believe the studio and Gabe Newell could do no wrong. Are you ready for a miracle? Any other studio that saw this level of success would have turned their flagship IPs into yearly franchises, but not Valve. What makes them so different? Why not just print money making sequels like everyone else? Because they've got a unique strategy that works even better. You see, of all the IP Valve owns, only Half-Life came from Valve originally. Counter-Strike? Half-Life mod, Valve hired the creators. Dota 2? Warcraft 3 mod, Valve hired the lead designer. Team Fortress? Quake mod, Valve hired the developers. Portal? This next test is impossible. Originally a freeware game, and Valve hired the dev team. Left 4 Dead? Made by Turtle Rock Studios. Valve acquired them shortly before the game released. You get it. Valve is an expert at letting their community create value for them. Now this isn't trying to diminish Valve at all. They see what gameplay loops resonate well with the community, hire the devs once they have something successful, and then repackage and release as a Valve game. The sheer number of hits and trendsetters they have released can't be a coincidence. Even if a Valve game misses every once in a while, artifact, they know what they are doing, but it's much rarer for them to make their own game from the ground up. And that's because Valve only makes their own games when certain conditions are met. This strategy sets Valve apart from the rest of their competition and is why Valve has always been at the forefront of their industry. No one does it like them. Yes, there are other innovative studios, but they're held back. Held back from trying unique strategies and forced to release new titles left and right. Forced by shareholders who expect bigger returns every year. When you start taking outside financing, those are often the people who are gonna be perturbing your decisions in ways that sometimes are helpful and sometimes are, you know, the death of your company. This is a key reason for Valve's success and why they release a new title so rarely. Valve is still a private company. The same guy that started Valve still has the majority control over Valve. And because the company isn't accountable to anybody, they are very careful about what games they release. He explains to me that Valve doesn't move forward with projects that don't seem promising or aren't working out, describing playtesting as their judge and jury. So Valve religiously validates their games through playtesting. And if they aren't happy with the results, they just scrap the project. But don't let that fool you into thinking Valve doesn't care about money. They just have other ways to get it. If we look at Valve's release schedule before 2013 and then after, things look a little different. Before 2013, Valve gave us all of these. But after that year, Valve only released an Asian Counter-Strike spinoff, Artifact, Dota Underlords, Aperture, Desk Job, and CS2. All either spinoff games, tech demos, or new engine ports. Since 2013, we've really only got two brand new games, The Lab and Half-Life Alex. And there's something in common with these games. Both are on VR and both are 
pushing Valve's newest technology. That's what's changed. Valve used to be a game developer, or at least someone that published great games. That was the focus, but not anymore, because way back in 2003, Valve struck digital gold. That year, Valve created Steam. Originally, it was just a platform to update Valve's titles online. But then it replaced the World Opponent Network, an online service for multiplayer. Following the change, Valve started offering digital copies of Valve games through Steam, games like Counter-Strike and Half-Life 2. Then finally, Valve made one of the greatest moves in gaming history. They let third-party developers sell their games on Steam. Most know what happened next. Steam became the biggest online video game marketplace in the world. The platform brings in billions of dollars a year, and Valve barely has to do anything. All of Valve's games combined don't even come close to the money that Steam brings in because Valve gets 30% of every game. Just for context, to understand how much money that is, it's estimated that Steam alone made Valve around $10 billion in 2022, which means 30 to $40 billion were transacted on the platform. And that number is just growing yearly. Yeah, it's no surprise Valve isn't interested in making games anymore. They just let others do it. Valve took the concept of let the community build for you to a whole new level. Why make your own games or even buy up validated games when you can just become the platform to host all the games? Valve just kept evolving, no longer thinking in one million dollars, but billions. We could make trillions. Why make trillions when we could make billions? When Valve created Steam in 2003, I imagine they saw it as a place to host all of their games and make updating easier. But now that Steam has become the go-to video game marketplace, Valve prints money. Combine that with their big three cash cows, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, and TF2, all making money from their in-game marketplaces. There's not really an incentive for Valve to make more games. So what does this mean for the future of Valve as a studio? Will they ever make more games? What about Half-Life 3? the game we've been waiting over a decade for. This is your daily Half-Life 3 update. There is no news. Well, I still think there's hope. In an interview with IGN, Gabe Newell said this. Half-Life games are supposed to solve interesting problems. And this lines up with what we've seen. Valve strives to innovate. Their games, Game Engine, Steam, their VR hardware show that Valve want to be on the forefront of the industry. But the industry they're working in now isn't video games. It's game hardware and software. When they make games now, it's to help sell their innovations and show what they are capable of. It's why we got a Half-Life game for VR and not for PC or console. So when will we ever get Half-Life 3? We will eventually, but Valve won't make it just to make it. We'll have to wait for Valve to push something new, some big tech innovation in VR or Steam or God forbid on mobile. Valve used to be a game publisher, but now they're a hardware manufacturer and a software distributor. I want Valve to keep releasing great games just as much as the next guy. But Valve doesn't make games anymore, and our only hope is that Valve creates something so innovative that they finally release Half-Life 3. This week's indie game highlight is Celeste, which doesn't need much of an intro since it's pretty popular. But man, if you haven't tried this game, you should. It's a 2D platformer with a very high skill level where you help Madeline survive her inner demons on her journey to the top of Celeste Mountain. Gotta go try this out, it's a good one. Thanks so much for joining. We'll see you later.